We're finally going to make it back into comms today. And man, I gotta tell you, there's just this constant droning going on right now. And I don't mean my voice. I mean the droning outside of machinery. As uh, a bunch of very fine folks are working on setting up my neighborhood to have fiber. Very excited about that. Hello, storage comms access storage room thing. Holy crap. I am excited to open up this room. Let me tell you what. There's a bunch of ammo for the pulse rifle and some money. Some contact energy for the beam. And more money. Those are all things that I find acceptable. Um, yeah, we'll go with this gun for a minute then. Probably going to regret that, and I'm going to wish I had this one armed. But, eh, that's fine. We'll use this guy for the moment. Cannot get into the maintenance gondola, so instead we'll turn around and go where we're supposed to go. Control room for the comms. Have we been in here before? I think we have, right? Huh. Fry? Someone hot-wired the dishes together and blew out the system. So we're screwed. No, it was sloppy work. Some of the dishes are intact. If I replace them and create a new circuit with no gaps, we could broadcast a signal. Short range only, but it should work. Okay, do it. I'll, uh, keep an eye on things here. Yeah, I don't think we've been in here. Never mind that. Uh, which way are we supposed to go? So we're supposed to go that way to find Bailey's rig. Uh, Bailey, first CTO, first CO, first commanding officer. My goodness, I cannot read. Communications log, first comms operator Bailey reporting. I want this on record. The ship is under attack, but Captain Matthias has refused to issue a distress call. And we all know why. This whole operation is illegal. Aegis 7 was sealed off. They knew it, we knew it, and we all kept our mouths shut. That ends now. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is USG Ishimura calling Wait, what the hell? Jesus. He took the whole comms array offline. It's over. Well, that's discouraging. But before we attend to that, let's play this. Retrieved from array buffer. Progress report, Captain Benjamin Matthias, Paragon Jordan, Una. This will be my last transmission. Afterwards, I'll make sure our pilgrimage can be completed. Um, was that it? Unsent message. It seemed like there was more than that. Buffer. Maybe not. My last transmission. Afterwards, I'll make sure our pilgrimage can be completed without interference. We have successfully brought the Holy Marker on board. Dr. Kine, an expert on the original marker, is deciphering its secrets. Uh, forgive me for quarantining you just seven. Director Eckhart's work may have been inconvenienced, but they're suffering some sort of epidemic. Regardless, Planet Crack begins tomorrow on schedule. CEC can scratch out its illegal operation now that the true prize is ours. Let's see Earth go try to cover this up. Altman be praised. Matthias out. I mean, he's doing this whole weird crossed hand arm thingy thing. Not weird at all. All right, the comms array locker room type room. There's some plasma energy. Good stuff. We will take all of that. Was that a ruby semiconductor? Honestly, I just kind of clicked and didn't pay attention. I have a bad, bad habit of doing that. Here, let's look. Oh, yeah. That one looks ruby. We got... Oh, look at that, man. We got a nice, good honking bronze one there, too. Here, let us reload this weapon now that we have some ammunition for it. Kind of debating busting out the line gun just so we can... Free up some inventory slots. Might not be a bad idea to have this gun ready, actually. Here, you know what? We've got a bunch of line gun ammunition, so let's... 
Let's maybe bust that out in number one. And then that'll free up some ammunition once we use it. I'm now at the point where I'm like, man, I have too much ammo. Well, it's because we have too much of the wrong kind. That's all. Okay. I gotta cut that out. Okay. You saw none of that. Uh, just go with me on it. Ow. My face. My precious face. Oh, you. What are you doing down there? Here. I mean, I really kind of just need to... Oh, yeah. That, that worked quite well, actually. Here, we'll take that guy. And then... I'm just kind of zooming around right now. I'm not really paying attention to the who's or the what's or the why's. Nope. I don't want your sternum. Okay, there's still someone else alive, is there not? I'm not sure if that dropped from someone else. Oh, buddy! You got lucky there. Because you should have gotten wrecked. That's the kind of wrecked I'm talking about. Eh, we'll take some flamethrower fuel. So here, let's um, let's grab this. I kind of think this guy's body has already been smashed, but just to make sure, we'll do that. Okay, we don't have any issues with air. That is my main concern right now. So we've got to rewire this thing. So if we grab, I guess if we grab one of these guys here, and then probably need to just get back to flying. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do this. I mean, is this one considered busted and the other one is fine? I don't really, um, hello? I suspect that's not the case, but um, you know, whatever. Here, I'll try this just to see what happens. No. Okay. Uh, I think I might have had a bad angle there. My bad. Here, can I... There's got to be a, a key somewhere for changing your angle in terms of uh, or going up and going down. And I don't know what it is. That was not what I was thinking of right there. Um, that guy looks like that needs to be repaired. That needs to be repaired. So we need to get to the central node, which is going to be that guy right there. And that's going to mean moving some around that are broken, apparently, and finding some that are not broken. So let's see, if we were to grab this guy, can we rotate this around? I don't know if we can rotate this. So let me just experiment right quick. I'm just going to plug you in right here. Okay, completely useless right there. I just wanted to confirm. So instead, maybe what we can do is we can start by plugging this guy in right up here. And that's gonna connect over to there. Let's rip that guy out. I'm just trying to get an idea for other pieces we have. Looks like we got this guy here. Hi. And we can use this one to I mean, it doesn't matter. We could use this one right away. I know that. But, you know, sometimes it's fun to build things in the least sensible way. So let us move this guy over to here, maybe. So we need a turn of direction that I don't think I see. Here, I need to zoom my way around again so I can see what we're dealing with. We need a left turn as far as I'm concerned. And I don't see a left turn at all. Definitely not one right here. Okay, perfect. So then this guy is going to go... Um, you're going to turn correctly, right? I just wanted to make sure that was going to be the case. Uh, this guy, I guess we need to go over to here. 
And then now we need one of those straight lines, which is right here. It's a weird puzzle in this game, but I kind of enjoy some of the puzzles in this game. I don't know. They're, uh, they're kind of cool. They're kind of fun. Okay. Chances are, and that's going to annoy someone. I think you got it. Try opening the panel to the Valor. Well, we will once we get back into the comms room, the actual station there. So let's go turn the array on. Let's click the button to communicate. That wasn't terrible. It took me a minute. But, I mean, that's to be expected. Got to collect all the pieces and all that stuff. Got to hit the Windows key and kick out to Windows and then have the game pause, thankfully. This is USM Valor, broadcasting on all frequencies to USG Ishimura in response to your SOS. We've picked up your escape pod number 47 and are en route to your position. This message will repeat every 30 seconds until you respond. The escape pod? Oh, fuck. The pod Hammond jettisoned. It had chip. That creature was inside. No, 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 no. USM Valor, come in. Come in, Valor. Oh, her signal isn't strong enough. Can we deploy the long range antenna? No, something's blocking the blast doors over the comms array. The hell? There'll be a manual release over at maintenance. I'll go. Keep trying to reach them. I mean, that's bad. And here I was getting ready to make a joke like... Hello? Would you like to place an order? Uh, sir, this is not a Wendy's. You know. Stuff along those lines. My bad. Not the right time, nor the right place. Uh, have we done everything else we need to in here? Oh yeah, okay. Let us go this way. How you doing? I'm just gonna stomp you until you are dead. And give me money. You know what I would really like right now? Now that I think about it. I'd like a store game is playing music that seems to indicate we are still in combat, and yet I don't see it. Ooh, take a note. Is there anything in here? Aha, there is something over there. It's an insanely bright light, for one. More pistol energy. Alright, so it is time to take the gondola to maintenanceola, or something. Alright, let's do it! This doesn't look the least bit dangerous at all. Um, hello? Those were legs, by the way. Those were legs. Okay. Audio or text? Text. Okay. It happened again, third time in the last however long it's been. I came in after shift and found Rousseau at the transmitter again. They looked like hell. I don't know if they'd even slept since the last time I caught them in here. Not very reassuring to see the chief engineer in that state. Russo didn't hear me come in, so this time I just listened. They were talking to the relay crew again. Talking. Then listening. They even laughed. God. How long has been since anyone on this ship laughed? I know I should say something to engineering. I've already told Russo over and over that we don't have a comms relay crew. That the array is broken beyond repair. That no one is coming to save us. And they listen, but it's like they can't keep those thoughts in their head. As if it's too much. I get it. Everything on this ship is too much. So this time, I just let them talk. If a broken transmitter and a mic full of static gives them something to hold on to, maybe even helps them keep this ship running a little longer, who am I to judge? And yeah, maybe I've talked into the same transmitter myself once or twice after hours, just in case. Like that poem says, hope sings the tune without the words and never stops. At all. Yeah. Okay. This is nothing if not a story of hope and desolation 
and pain and suffering and torture and anguish and all those other things that go with hope. Let's go to comms maintenance. How you doing? How you doing? You got some super long legs there. Um, let us burn everything with fire. Burn with fire. Purify with all that is fiery and good. I have no idea if there were only two of those things. It sure looked like there were more, but I think we only picked up two items. So therefore, going to say there were only two of those things around. Say the locker room is probably not the way to go if I had to guess. Therefore, this is a store. The way to go and a weapon upgrade. A plasma, the third plasma cutter upgrade. Holy crap, a doodle do. Let us get some money here. Okay, excellent. Now, we can backtrack. Now that I think about it, we just passed a bench. We might want to do that. So if we check our inventory here, in fact, we might need to do that just to free up the inventory slot. Bring this part to the bench, extend the upgrade path, and gain access to a special upgrade called Weighted Blades. Yeah, I don't have a clue what it does either. So that gets rid of our ruby and our gold semiconductor. And because we now have a ton of money, I'm going to do what I always do, which is spend it on nodes, because nodes are my friend. Uh, I would kind of like to try out maybe both of these guys even. The idea of the, the Ripper Ripper uh, Ripper Rick O'Shang Rick O'Shang like the I don't know was it called the Ripper in Unreal Tournament the one that shot the the blades I kind of like the idea of that I want to see how that works but uh, we kind of stopped using the Ripper for a little while so that might be a, a me problem for somewhere on down the line. Okay, so let's go check out Plasma Cutter and see what we've got now. We can actually get to it right away, too. Melee attacks can knock enemies prone. Oh, dude, that sounds amazing. So if we want to go capacity rate of fire, we can get straight to melee. You know what? Just for the crap of it, I'm doing it. I'm going to commit all of our remaining nodes to that guy. Okay. So let us take a look, because now I have ever so much curiosity about this. So let's grab this guy. Oh, yeah. So you can kind of see right at the end there. It's kind of like a, a V in the middle of two big chunks of metal on the end. Yeah, that looks, I mean, it looks and feels weighty the way, the way he's swinging that around. It's definitely a different animation than what he has for the line gun. Yeah, it's a whole different animation. The way that, yeah, it's pretty similar to that one, actually. Yeah, it is the same one. Okay, so it's the same as the flamethrower, but... Yeah, that, that feels nice and chunky and weighty, and I cannot wait to punch some of these guys because I kind of have a a tendency to want to shoot them. Because, I don't know, that just seems like... Or, uh, shoot them, to punch them, because that just seems like a fun idea. Alas, we will go into comms maintenance to deploy the antenna on the next one. And with a little luck, we're going to punch someone in the face and knock them down. And then we'll take advantage of them being on the ground and either we'll shoot them or we'll just start stomping on them because, I mean, look at these boots, dude. These boots are made for stomping. They're going to stomp all over you. Catch you on the next one. Till on. Thanks for watching. See you later.